Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're going to be showing you some Dollar Tree DIYs plus a bonus DIY. But there's something in it that let's keep watching. Yay! Today's video is in collaboration with my really great friends, Shayna from Robinson Repurposing, Camaro from Dying to DIY, and Savannah from Savvy Crafts with Savannah. So I just wanted to let you guys know that this is a part of the Fab Four collab. Every other month, the four of us get together and do a collab. This month in lieu of Mother's Day, now we know that Mother's Day was a few weeks ago, but in honor of Mother's Day, we wanted to do some DIYs with our little. So today's video will be a Make It With Mommy. Sophia will not be in every single DIY with me, so I hope that you will stick around to see her do her thing. So with all that being said, check the links in the description box below. Let them know that I sent you, and let's jump into today's DIYs. Guys, um, I accidentally cracked that a little. Now I'm taking this off. Now we're going to do the paint, and we're just going to do the transfer black. My mom helped me with it. We mixed it. I mixed it a little, and it's pretty funny. But we're doing those all. We're doing all of them, and then we're going to show off that. We're going to do that black. Then we fuzzed it. Then we fuzzed it. And you got to fuzz it a lot, so that way it doesn't stick too bad, right? Yeah, we got to fuzz it really good so that it, it don't stick. So this is the truck cut out with Chalk Couture. And ever since I had this truck, you guys, she has wanted to do this with me. So I was so excited to let her do that. Yeah, because I was so excited too. So with this new truck cut out, because this truck cut out um, is front and back, the transfer for the truck is front and back so we started with the front side and these are in layers that way you can put your truck two different colors or if you just want it black you can do it all black but you do it in layers so the first layer we started with black and then the second layer what color did we do the second layer we did the second layer pink and why do we do it pink because it's a it's your favorite color. Yeah, and it's a... <laughs> what? Spring truck. Yeah, and it's a spring truck. Good job. So, you guys, she was amazing the, at this. And the other side is a summer truck. That's and now, right. And now I'm going to dry it with my mom's dryer. And then I'm going to take that and just do the other side red then we'll do the wheels, now let's do the truck, and then we'll get on to the next one once we're done. Now, all we gotta do is just do that, pull off our transfer, and those are both watermelons, and then we're going to do... I accidentally didn't pay attention, <laughs> so it went off the little thing a little Transfer, bit. that's okay. Transfer. We're going to cover it, right? So we were in Home Depot the other day, and, and this picked, girl is so and, smart. And I picked out the little, those wiggly pieces because <laughs> I like those wiggly pieces because they're so cute. They're called trim pieces, I think. We were in the section where all the spindles are and stuff in Home Depot, and we walk past it, and my husband and I are just walking, and she's like, Mom, look, I can put this on my truck at the bottom. And I was like, gosh, girl, you're so smart. So we picked these up at Home Depot. I believe they were about $3 yeah. a piece. And then what we did was measure out the sides and the long piece I cut that for her, and then I let her stain it. Yeah, and then I stained it, and I was just staining it so with the brush so that it looked like stain. And because what did? How did we make this? We made it with 
stain. Paint and? And water. That's right. So once we had it stained, then what, what did we do? We glued it on. We glued it on. So I always like to start with the side pieces first. Then I will lay down the longer pieces and then the other side piece just so that way I know that it fits together really nicely so once I had the frame on then what do we do no say it you can say it distressed it distressed it so that it looked old that's right can I hold it mm -hmm. so that's why we did it because we like to do it and I like to do it. I was so excited to do this project with my mom. And it's pretty cool because I love the truck. And did you know if those are watermelons on the other side is flowers. But I flipped it around because I thought that would look up. It would look different and it would look really cool so we did that then i was so excited to make this project and show you guys because it's very 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 cool i love it hey you guys so what I'm going to do is take this because um, I forgot this, so we're going to have to, like, I don't know how we're going to do this first, but see this? Hold on, I don't need to show it, so it's in all our pieces. So I need another little piece, and um, it's really, um, I just used the hot glower and it really burned me. Make sure you don't touch that or nothing. No. So then I was tired out so my mom finished the rest for me and I was just tired out. I couldn't do no more di die. DIYs. DIYs. <laughs> So, we finished the flowers, then we put it on, my mom made a bow, and we put it on, and that was it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe to this video, I hope you like it, bye guys! You guys, I am so proud of her. She does chalk couture like a pro. So I get questions all the time. Are chalk couture transfers reusable? And here in a minute, I am gonna show you exactly how to clean them. That way you can use them over and over again. But I love the way this turned out. Let me know in the comments down below which side of Sophia's truck is your favorite. I always get questions if these are reusable and the answer is 100% yes they are. So once I'm done chalking, I'll put it in my sink under warm water and you just spray as much as you can off. And then I take a sponge from Dollar Tree and usually I'm holding the other end with my other hand so I'm holding my phone like this minute. So I just take as much of this off as I can with this sponge. And once I have it all clean, the red sponge, once I have it all clean with that sponge, the red and the black will stain your transfer, but as long as this silk screen part is clean, you're good to go. So I have my cup there helping me, but then you're going to take your board eraser, this these are really cheap on the chalk website and you're just going to do the same thing with this front and back. 
I have them all washed and you want to wash them as soon as you're done chalking with that part. So I chalked this, I washed it. I chalked this part, I washed it. Um, then you're just going to lay them on a paper towel or a drying rack, whatever. Sticky side up until they're dry and then you can place them back on the backing sheet and use them over and over and over again. I cannot stress how important this is for the life of your transfers. You always want to take care of them. That way you get the most uses out of them. If you're new here, my name is Melissa. And we love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Farmhouse decor is my specialty and much more. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love if you would stick around by clicking that red subscribe button and then you just want to tap the bell and all to be notified every single time I upload. So, so with all that being said, Moving on to the next project, I take one of these signs from Dollar Tree. This is the round sign that has kind of like the faux wood and marble look on the front with this family sign. And I started by easily pulling up that wording. Now it's really, really thin metal, so I didn't want to bend it or break it. Um, that way I could use it in a future project. And then I just took this I get questions on this all the time as well. This is the background I have on my desk and it's not contact paper, it's actually wrapping paper that I got at Walmart back around Christmas time. But I do just mark that or measure out the circle and then I cut it out. I then take my blow dryer, I take that sticker off, and of course there's residue left over. So I just take my sanding sponge and I just sand all of that residue off. I then take my drill and take the hanger off and once again I sand that smooth and then I fill it in with some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree. Next, I paint the sides and the back side of this sign with some white Waverly really chalk paint, and I only give the back a distressed coat of paint. I then take some raffia while the sign is drying, and I took six strands, two strands in each, and I braided that all the way down, and this did take three strands braided, and that's for a different part of the project. So once this was was dry I took my disappearing purple glue stick and I glued on the uh, front of the sign and then I just glued that piece of wrapping paper that we just cut out. Next I take this one inch flat reed that I believe I bought from Etsy or Joann's. I can't remember exactly. If I can find a link I'll leave it in the description box because we are going to use this on a different project but I just measured out around the sign how long of a piece I would need and then I take that same quote unquote stain that I made many videos back with just some antique wax some black paint and some water and it's the exact same quote unquote stain that Sophia just used and I stained that piece of reed Next, I just cut the end off of our raffia. I make sure to secure that with some hot glue. That way it doesn't unravel. And then I took this little jar from Dollar Tree. I start by gluing the raffia itself and then placing it down onto the bottle. And then as I wrap this around the first and second layer, I do occasionally hot glue it. That way it stays in place. And I just continue with all my pieces all the way up the bottom of the jar. So that one, that little jar was done. I love that jar so much. I want to do that to all my jars now. <laughs> but anyway, I took this other jar from Dollar Tree. And this was a little yogurt container. So for the jar from Dollar Tree, I just painted with my white Waverly chalk paint right there where it looks like a label would be and then I painted the entire yogurt jar. I always save kind of that kind of stuff just because you never know when you can use it and it went perfectly on this tray so I was glad I was 
I was glad that I did and once the paint was dry on this little jar from Dollar Tree I do take an N, an O, and a 3 from the rub on transfers once again from Dollar Tree and I just uh, transfer on N03 for like number 3. I don't know why I just always see things that have that on there and I love the way it looks so once I had the rub on transfers on there then I do just take my mini finger sander which is in my Amazon store in the link in the description box and I just uh, sand random spots to make it look old and weathered next moving on to this little yogurt jar i just take some jute i put a bead of hot glue in the back i wrap it around the neck about three times and then i cut it and glue it again now there was a cork in that jar that we put the raffia on and i wasn't going to use it but then it fit perfectly in one of those little bud vases from dollar tree that usually have the daisies in them so i just stuck it in there and i love the way that it looks so that worked out perfectly um, but then i just go ahead and i glue the reed around the edge of this sign So I was going to stop there with this white jar and then once I put it on the tray I felt that it was missing a little something so I did just take these eucalyp eucalyptus <laughs> Here we go you guys surprise surprise. It wouldn't be a video if Melissa did not trip over her words um, But I just take these eucalyptus rub on transfers once again from Dollar Tree I just cut some random little picks and then I transfer those on to that jar i think that it just gives it that little pop of color that i felt it was need it was needing and last but not least i took some nautical rope once again from dollar tree and i cut a piece for handles on either side and then i secured those with some hot glue So I want to thank Blake, Monica, Patty, Judy, Tammy, and Nellie for buying me a coffee. I appreciate it so much, you guys. If you enjoy my work and would like to buy me a coffee, check the link in the description box below. You'll also get a shout out next week, but you guys don't have to do that. I appreciate if you do, and you can always support your favorite creators just by liking commenting sharing watching the ads there's so many different ways to support us you don't have to support us monetarily so i appreciate every single one of you any way that you support me moving on to our next project i love making tobacco baskets you guys and i knew that for this video i wanted to make another one because i did just get this reed not too long ago and i have been itching to play with it so i start by measuring out i believe i did 16 pieces um 22 inches long now in order to get reed more pliable or easy to work with, you just want to soak it in some water for five minutes. So that's what I did. I actually had this planner that I was going to use shortly and I figured that it would be perfect. So I did just kind of bunch them up and stick it in the water and then I set a timer for five minutes. Once the timer went off, I took them out on a towel and I just set them on the towel next to me. I then had this sign from Dollar Tree and I laid out seven pieces going long ways and then we're going to do eight pieces going the other way just so that way our tobacco basket is a little bit longer than taller if that makes sense but you start on the end and you go over, under, over, under, and then the next one you're going to go under, over, under, over, and you do that all the way down until you have it as long as you want. Once I had it weaved, then I took a longer piece from the roll and I just started 
about two away from the corner and I just pinned it. Now when making a tobacco basket, I cannot stress enough that the corner is the most important part because that is gonna make the edges stand up just like a tobacco basket. So once I was pinning these, then I realized that it would probably be much easier if I just stapled these. So that's what I did. I took the pins off one by one and stapled them and then for the rest I continued that all the way around until I got to where the end of the reed met the first part if that makes sense. So once the piece met with the first starting piece for the edge, then that piece, the first piece I went on the outside. Once it met there, then I just continued the piece all the way on the inside and I glued it down. That way you won't see the staple marks. And once again, I continued that all the way around until it came back to the part where I had already covered it. Next, I take another piece and I just glue that to the outside once again so that way you cannot see those staple marks. And I also like to do three layers just because it's going to ensure that the edge is nice and strong and sturdy. Next, I just take my scissors and I cut down all the excess pieces. Now, I would recommend to do this before you start layering your edge pieces. So once you get that first part all the way around, I would cut your edges and then continue on with your second and third layer. Now, I always... I've always done my tobacco baskets with an X, but I saw these really pretty tobacco baskets. I can't remember where I saw them, and they had this kind of diamond-shaped design, so I knew that next time I made one that I wanted to do this design, so all I did was just cut four pieces, and I kind of tucked them behind the cross pieces. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but you can see what I did and then I hot glued them in place after I trimmed them down so that way you wouldn't see them hanging off. And then I stained them with my ebony stain that has stain and polyurethane. And then once I had a layer of the ebony, then I went in with the Sorry guys, I had to think for a minute what it was called. Um, I then went in with the barrel brown. I just wanted it to have some contrast. Um, I don't know if there was any rhyme or reason, but I kind of tested it on the back and I liked them both together rather than like one or the other. So that's why I went with this technique. And of course I had my little helper there helping me, but you can stain this whatever you like. You can leave it the natural color. It's really your preference and totally up to you. Next, I took these jars from Dollar Tree and I just gave them one good coat of white Waverly chalk paint. Once they were dry, then I just took my little mini finger sander and I just sanded it down those designs on it. I didn't do all four sides because one of the sides you're not going to see it, but if that bothers you, you can do all four sides. I just wanted these jars to look old and weathered, um, just like the tobacco basket, which is why I took some white Waverly chalk paint and I distressed the entire front of the basket. Next, I took some jute on the back of my jar with some hot glue and I just glued um, the jute down and then wrapped it around the neck of the jar about 
five or six times and I'm going to show you why in a minute. I almost left them plain but then I realized that I was going to hang these on the basket with some jute so it probably would have just blended in or I know that it just blends in much better if I had already um, glued some jute down to the neck and then I kind of laid the jars out to see where I wanted them to hang. I flipped it over, I fed jute through those holes and then flipped it back over. I tied a knot first and then laid my jar down and I tied another knot in the front and then cut the edges and glued down the excess so that it all blended in and I did this for both sides. Last but not least, I took these little fairy lights that I got from Dollar Tree. I put a strand in each of the jars and then you can add whatever you like. Greenery, you can leave them plain. It's totally up to you. I added cotton and greenery to mine just because that goes with my decor and I absolutely love the way that this turned out, you guys. It 100% looks store-bought or maybe I'm just being biased, but let me know in the comments down below what you think. Does it look store-bought or does it look handmade? What do you want on yours? background to be white or do you want it to be pink? Um, actually I want it to be pink. You do? Yeah. Okay, we can make like a pink stain, like real light pink stain. Yeah. I think that'll look cool. Yeah. And then we can distress it with white. Yeah. Make it look what? What does distressing do? it look old. Alright, let's do it. Yeah. For the last project, you guys, I took this 8x10 canvas from Dollar Tree and I started by taking it out of the package and taking all the staples out of the back with my staple pull. Now, I had make, made this exact sign minus the little holder at the bottom a while ago on my channel to go with my farmhouse decor and ever since I made that Sophia has wanted one for her room which is why I was just asking her like what color she wanted to do how she wanted to do it and all that good jazz but I then once I took it out of the canvas then I just sanded down all the rough edges I then just put some ballerina Waverly chalk paint in a little dish that I get from Dollar Tree or container I should say and then Sophia helped me stain this with our ebony stain and we did the frame. I did not worry about the back. If you're worried about the back then you can stain the back but we were kind of on a time crunch here and by this time I was just ready to be done so that way I could edit and get it up to you or uploaded to you, I should say. Oh my goodness. Um, and while we set that aside to dry, then I just added some water to the pink paint and I let her stir it up. Now we were going for like a stained look on these. Obviously she wanted pink like she said a few minutes ago. And so I took some large popsicle sticks that I get from Home Depot for 98 cents a pack, 30 come in a pack. And I let her stain all 10 of those. Next, I laid them out to make sure that they all fit in the back, and then I just I just <laughs> secured them all with some hot glue.
Next, I went on my computer and I used that same exact font that I used for mine. I asked her if she wanted a different style letter. She said no, she wanted to make it exactly like the other one. So I did just use Algerian and the size was 600 to print off that S. And then we took some Arteza graphite paper and we transferred that on to the sign. Next, she took a black paint pen and just colored all of that in. Then we took this candle holder from Dollar Tree. She cut the tag off and painted it black and then set that aside to dry. Now, by this part in the project, I was on my own. <laughs> <laughs> which is okay she's five she only has a certain a attention span so I had no problem finishing this up for her but I did just distress the edges with some white as well as the candle holder with some white Waverly chalk paint as well and then these were the little white flowers with greenery she was talking about I believe I got these from Walmart you guys I love Walmart's floral I cannot stress that enough but I did just pull them off of the pick I glued them around the S in a wreath shape and then I took some hot glue and secured the bottom of this canvas to the candle holder with some hot glue and then reinforced it in the back with some tumbling tower blocks I'm sure you can hear Isabella out there having a ball she's in the living room right here I can see her <laughs> But look at my baby. She was so happy with her sign. And I am just so thrilled at the way that everything turned out. I had so much fun DIYing with her for this video. I know that she wasn't in all of them. But she's a kid. She doesn't want to DIY for a few days straight. So no harm, no foul. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite. If you are not subscribed yet, you might as well click that red subscribe button. Become part of the family. That way you don't miss any DIYs. And don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up for Sophia. She worked so, so hard. And if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely amazing and stunning. You are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul. Also, don't forget to go check out my friends. I will leave all their information in the description box below. Like I said, let them know that I sent you. Show them some love. I cannot wait to see their videos with their littles. And I just think that this is going to be such a hit and such a good idea. So go show them some love. Show me some love in the comments down below. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.